What's up guys, Nolan here, and today we're going over a topic that a lot of people probably thought would never happen, while statistically at least seems like a lot don't know about, which is actual vehicles in Escape from Tarkov. Yes, they are planned, along with the proper tools to eliminate them, aka launchers and explosives. Now, real quickly for the current news, I did want to point out that BSG have been making some hidden changes, I just don't have specifics at the moment. First off, Kappa only requires level 55 now, that's been confirmed. Otherwise, basically, if you're noticing that you're becoming overweight at lower weights, or your stamina isn't picking up as fast or some guns are recoiling differently you are not crazy now when it comes to the weight changes it actually might end up helping us in the long run as the more you play the more you increase strength and potentially could show some people the benefits of the better stats quicker at least that's the glass half full side of things the gun changes you can check out in the links in the description just check in on your favorite builds and maybe a couple of your older favorite builds and see what will work best for you at your current level and trader availability there's also a theory that scavs are spawning with better loot to either make up for the queue times or make people People use them more often. Either way, my last few scabs have been great at the start and others are reporting the same, so do remember to show some love to your scab. Now back to today's main topic, yes vehicles are planned to be coming to Escape from Tarkov, but before we go into the current details, just remember everything is subject to change and these were initially only plans. However, on this topic specifically, I'm very comfortable discussing it since we saw the BTR in action already in the latest Streets trailer, while the launcher skill in-game is the icon of an RPG-26. So chances are we're going to be seeing these in the game in the future. When it comes to the vehicles we know of there are three the btr the armored train and the truck the btr with a 30 millimeter cannon or heavy machine gun or no gun has been directly discussed by nikita as planned in the past with the 30 millimeter cannon variant being shown off in the streets trailer nikita later said there's versions with just a machine gun or no gun as well later he discussed there would also be an armed version of an armored train that we can use to go from map to map and have the mounted weapons as protection the truck or lightly armored vehicle was also brought up at some point but i forget by who and when I just know that that was brought up, which isn't hard to imagine anyway, seeing that we already have all of these vehicle exits. Basically, just picture yourself getting into that vehicle and it bringing you somewhere else. That's what this would be. The design of these vehicles will be that they have a set route. You will not be able to drive them freely, but you will have limited access to the directions that it goes in and its weapons, if it has them. The way Nikita described the weapon uses was that they would be remote or manned. The 30mm cannon would be remote and you would have to use it inside of the vehicle for the BTR. Meanwhile, every other type of weapon could be manned from an open top turret or door of some kind. For balance reasons, this would be much easier because you can just shoot the guy in the gun. It's assumed that payment will work just like the current vehicle exits, but what we don't know is the process of approaching the vehicle, and that's where things can get spicy. In the streets tease, we can clearly see a group of armed men jumping off of the BTR while the cannon points in our direction but doesn't actually shoot. What we don't know is if they are hostile to us initially, or maybe that's just extra protection for the vehicle, or it's possible that there are some types that are hostile while others aren't. For example, that could be some kind of new faction or group associated with a scav boss and we need to eliminate them with the next question being if we do need to eliminate them what do we use bare minimum we can put explosives or mines on the street and wait for them to go by but we don't know if there's going to be a solid pattern for that just yet you might be sitting there for an hour and have nothing happen the other option being launchers that you can bring with you there is a possibility that a dual purpose grenade might damage the gun or take the wheels out otherwise the best bet would be a rocket launcher which of course we don't have in the game yet the rpg 26 is planned along with the rpg 7 with the potential for the rpg 30 and Schmel thermobaric launcher as well. It's also still presumed the Law and AT4 are planned, but we'll see what happens there. All of these launchers have the potential of having variations of warheads inside of them. However, it's a little different with the Schmel, although not confirmed as planned. It's specifically a one-time use thermobaric launcher, which the concussive force from that can kill a BTR or any light vehicle's crew with no problem at all, as well as in case you didn't know, level buildings. When last discussed, Nikita said it was a possibility, so we'll see. The RPG-26 will likely have a basic, high explosive anti-tank warhead and be one time use. The RPG-30 is a fancy dual warhead system where it shoots a projectile to activate active protection systems and then it has a second warhead that is a tandem charge just behind it. TLDR, it can kill a lot of things including main battle tanks if you hit it in the right spot which means it can easily kill a BTR. It's basically an ultimate anti-armor launcher but it is one time use and I don't know if it's planned. It just sees very heavy use these days so I figured it would be. As far as I know, all of the other launchers can have a variety of warheads while only the RPG-7 is able to be used multiple times. The Law and AT-4 are one-time use systems, while the RPG, you can swap out warheads as you like. Again, all with a large variety from high explosive to high explosive anti-tank to even variations of thermobaric or what NATO countries call bunker busting. It all depends on what BSG wants to add. I would speculate that for balance reasons, they might make it easy and have each launcher be good at a specific thing. Maybe with the Law and the RPG-26 being an all-around good cheap version because that's kind of what they are. So maybe we see the Schmel be the only thermobaric, while 
while each of the other types have their own specific types and the RPG-7 is the only multiple use with maybe even multiple warheads. It just makes things cleaner, so maybe that's what they do. The explosives are straightforward, and although there will be tripwire mines, Nikita mentioned before that the big stuff like claymores will be manually detonated. We'll see what happens with all that, especially since we have just recently saw a new mine that automatically deploys tripwires everywhere. When it comes to the destructive power of these weapons, Nikita has talked in the past about how there won't be significant damage to the environment past some predetermined walls being able to be blown down and debris from the surrounding area like shelves and stuff. We've seen all of that actually already in the most recent Streets trailer. But what will happen to us is that the explosive and concussive force will still move through certain materials. We believe we saw a bugged version of this with the initial release of the grenade launcher and we might still see it with the mounted grenade launchers where you don't have to be in direct shot of the shrapnel. You could just be on the other side of thin metal or a sheetrock wall and still get injured or killed by it. The same will go for these explosives and the launchers depending on their capabilities or at least that's what was said about them. So TLDR, even though that RPG might not take the wall that you're hiding behind, it might still kill you through it. Any mines or other types of explosives that you're close enough to trigger or get triggered for would very likely kill you. I'll keep in mind the fact that it takes two of the ones in game right now for stuff around woods and other places. However, the serious stuff like what's guarding the lighthouse is usually one and done. So it seems like the proper stuff will get you pretty good. Now, luckily we have had some devices like mine detectors confirmed as planned with advanced features. So there is at least a glimmer of light in our explosively darkened future. Either way, for sure, some big boom coming down the line. Let me know what you guys think in the comments on Twitter or in the Discord chat. There might be some Q&As as well as podcasts and general discussions popping up in the near future from people other than me with BSG, but we'll see what happens on my end. Either way, regardless, if they talk to anybody or say anything, you will be the first to know about it. Keep a lookout on Twitter for the fast moving stuff as it really does seem like BSG are pushing a lot of hidden changes right now. And as always, I will keep an eye out for anything new and let you guys know more once I do. Quick plug here for the Pray for Wipe and Sons of Soon shirts and hoodies. Link below if you like what you see. Thank you guys for the support. But for more Tarkov news and content, follow me on Twitter or check out these playlists here. If you like this video, then you know the drill. Please subscribe. I really appreciate the people who do. If you're looking for people to play with, check out our Discord. Links below if you're interested. Otherwise, I hope you have a nice day. See you guys.